in Nigeria have their own hidden agenda, not to go and serve, just to go and um, have a bit of their own uh, national cake. And that is why it is always difficult and it's always violent when it comes to election years like this, because if the purpose of me going to any elective offices is just to serve, uh, the first question I will ask myself is, does it worth it? Starting from the nomination form. Does it worth it, me spending millions to buy a nomination form? Does it worth it, me spending millions to buy another form that uh, they may be show of expression? And at the end of the day, does it worth it to spend millions of naira to seek elective office for as long as the purpose of me going there is to serve? But majority of our people is they just going there to have their own share of the national cake, as they say. So that is why it's always violent. Mm. So they recruit, I mean, it, those that's are going there just for the purpose of their own personal benefit and their cronies. They recruit. They will go to any length to purchase the form, even if it is 100 million. They will go to any length to purchase the expression form, even if it is 200 million. Because at the end of the day, if you put it together, if you look at it and you say, okay, if I'm going to serve for four years and maybe I'm going to be a governor, how much is the salary of a governor? per month. So when you multiply that, you realize that, look, there is a lot of differences, but their purpose is to share. And that is why their supporters will always go to any length to either destroy, maim, cause mayhem in order for their own candidate or who they support to get to that position at all costs. So there is always a security challenge. And the security challenge is beyond the capacity of our personnel now in Nigeria. Mm. It's beyond, yeah. Why is that so? Thank you. If you look at United Nations Charter, I think they said um, it's about, um, I think it's one officer per, is it two, 2,000 or maybe or less than 1,000 or whatever. In Nigeria, if you put together, let's look at the constitution imposed on the Nigerian police. They impose the power to supersede or to supervise our internal security affairs, look into our security affairs. The Nigerian army to protect Nigerians through our territorial borders for external aggressions. Now, in Nigeria today, we talk about a population of about 220 million. So if we are to talk about how many personnel do we actually need, how many policemen do we actually need, we will need nothing less than 4 million policemen to monitor our internal affairs and security. But how many policemen do we have today? Put together in Nigeria today, I can say it with all sense of sincerity that we have less than half a million. And those half a million are divided between the statistics states and the federal capital territory. And look at other designates. Do you know how many policemen that are attached to one governor, the deputy mm, governor? Mm, mm. And so, I mean, mm. uh, when you now look at the, the, maybe now we have about 300,000 policemen looking after 200 million Nigerians. How do you expect them to perform? They cannot, so the, the ratio is below par. Yes, thank God, I mean, I read recently that um, over the next few years, Nigerian government will be recruiting at least 10, 20,000 policemen every year, at least just to make it up. So the manpower is low. So that is why you see the, I mean, there is no rocket science. A policeman can only do mm. what a man can only do. It, uh, I remember when we were young, there is this saying that four man is just a title. Mm. Four man, no man can do four man's job. A man, if you are given the title that you are the four man of a group, <laughs> you, it is just a title. So no man can do four man's job. Four men will only do four men's job and one man will do one job. Uh, looking at, you just made, made mention of uh, manpower being low, but expectations are high that uh, we might have increase on that. Why do we have this low turnout in police manpower in the first place? Thank you so much. There are a lot of things attributed to that. Number one is this issue of not being given every Nigerian that opportunity that we are equal, equality. Mm. Not every Nigerian has that equality. So um, when you look at the recruitment process of Nigerian police of today, they have two cadres. They have those that they call uh, the recruits and they have those that they call the cadets. As you understand, if you go in for a recruit, by the time you finish your course, you come out as a constable, even if you are a master's degree holder. If you go in as a cadet with ordinary OND or HND, by the time you come out, you come out as a cadet inspector, a cadet ASP. Right? Now, you can just imagine, majority of those that are given that opportunity 
to be recruited as a cadet are people, I say it with all sense of sincerity, people that knows who knows who, who they are that can recommend that social person is my is from me. Mm. There is a quota. The others that doesn't have that opportunity are those people, even if you have a master's degree, you cannot, it's difficult for you to be picked as a recruit into the cadet level. So you will come in with your master's as an ordinary police officer. By the time you finish the distance, you are being given just a constable, all right? So maybe before you will get to the level of an inspector, you're talking of 11 to 14 years. And somebody who has a lower educational qualification than you, because he knows somebody that says, oh, this is from me, and that person is recruited, as a cadet inspector or cadet ASP, in another 11 years, he's around the rank of a superintendent or a chief superintendent of police. So, which means that the system in the first place has some, uh, some Absolutely. irregularities. Absolutely. I've always been an advocate of, look, give everybody that level field to perform. Don't just say that, oh, we recruit somebody. In the United Kingdom, there is nothing like that. Nothing like a cadet uh, recruit or an ordinary. It is what you know that will promote you. And the beauty of it is that you can be in the force for 20 years and you will still maintain a rank of an inspector. Mm. But you will probably be a professional, mm. professional in one area, either professional in, as a detective mm. or professional as um, an investigator. So they don't look at rank there, they look at what you do and everybody has been given that respect. So unlike here, where we have these two levels of oh, uh, recruitment, that is the basic, that is number one problem with the recruitment process in Nigeria. In your earlier statement, you made mention of how most people aspiring for political positions don't have it at the back of their mind to serve, which brings about the use of any force, which obviously tends to lead to a security breach and breakdown. And looking at the reality now, it looks more like that's our reality now. Uh, so what can be done? What can the government do, especially the government of this day, uh, so that we can encourage people to come out and vote in the election? Thank you so much. It's a difficult question. And um, it is not something that is not doable. But the first thing is that our politicians, are they there to serve us? Is the purpose of going to elective offices, are they going there to serve? No, I don't see it that way. Majority of them goes there just to fulfill their own, or like I've said, just to share part of the national cake. And in order to address that, we can only get to that point where there will be less security challenge whenever there is election. We will get to that point if today that political office are made less attractive the way it is now, until we make it less attractive, then we will now know genuinely the people that want to go and serve. We've been running democracy now, I'm sorry to say this, since 1999, uninterrupted. Since 1999, and if I'm not mistaken, it's well over 20 years now that we've been running democracy. Honestly speaking, have we, when I say we, majority of Nigerians, have we benefited the dividend of democracy? In my own opinion, I would say no, because all the things that we point to in Nigeria today, majority of them talk of the third mainland bridge, the Muritala Mohammed International, all those things are product of the military. I'm not encouraging military incursions into our democracy. But when you look at the development, talk of the third Niger bridge or whatever, now we've had an uninterrupted democracy since 1999. What have we been hearing? Hmm. Mismanagement of funds. A minister that runs away with uh, billions of dollars, a minister that did this, a minister that does that, a governor that did this, a governor that... We have a, a, in this country a situation where a governor was indicted and by the time he ran away from UK, he pretended to be a woman. A, a woman. We have a situation in this country where a governor a civilian governor was cleared in Nigeria because of the bureaucracy in our judicial system. That is another story for another day. And the same governor got to United Kingdom and convicted of the same offense with proof. So when we are talking until we make that office less attractive in the United Kingdom, I stayed there, I worked there for years. Mm. You will take the same train, the same bus, the same on the ground with somebody, a, even a prime minister, 
because nothing for him to be scared of. 